It is with great pride that I present these honorary deputy sheriff badges to Wallow and Billy Kidd, two deputy who embody the spirit of the presence, determination, and giving you better stand up, kid. You better stand up. You're 5-0 now. I, I didn't go to the police and care. Oh, man. Don't ever think it's more than that. We two little Philly who stay focused. It's daytime. He got three flames. This is a daytime event. Too. And two knives. And two knives. Yeah, I told and you. brass knuckles. You see and brass knuckles. knuckles. You see and he got knuckles. brass knuckles. Why though, man? He came light today. Look at him. He go he go he go he go rebel about this. Look at him. He did two yeah, years yeah. in the joint. He can't get his tail lights. He go later on. He gonna be like, you know, you pulled that six clips on you. He gonna he gonna be mad about this. I don't need six. He thinks I don't need six. He wears ice to work. That's when you need a lot of shots. You know what I'm saying? I don't need six. Yeah, he wants bitches to know you. I'm getting money, bitch. He got his ice on at work. Look, he got his ice on at work. Look at it. You know what I mean? He thought I wasn't going to peep that. Yeah, hey, what? He be out here like this. You want me to get you in? Hey, kids. How you doing? Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, move, baby. Let's see if we can. Throw your number in this phone, baby. Let's go back. Show that. Show that. Show that. What's up, dog? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Yeah. Everything good? What's up, man? She gonna move? We got the. Oh, no. All right. What is this? Talking about me now, what you about to be? Now, what you about to be? Oh, you cannot chase me. Listen, you know what you about to be? I don't be no fuck. Talking about me, you about to have all that. And you gonna have a badge. What you gonna do? Please. How Mel Wells gonna make us the police, man? Look, I didn't go to the. Yep. the, 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 the I didn't go to the, the academy. The academy. This is the academy today. I made a move. We gonna get our badges and we gonna be able to chase you. You wanna be the police. <laughs> I'm not gonna be the police. I don't wanna be the police. I wanna be the police. That's Mel Sunday. Yeah, say hi, MJ. Stop. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Say, Mom, don't be looking at me. Your mom, make your puppies out. Say, Mom, they don't say, Mom, you did a good job. I got the puppies on. <laughs> hey, they say, I got to put some puppies on. If you don't like them, say, I don't want to be Mom, I got to put the puppies on. <laughs> well, Dean, you guys snap this one, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wallow just took that to get some fried rice. He already had a plate. He back over there. Look at him. Hey, you like Wallow? You a battle warrior, man? Boy.
lock Gil up. I'm gonna lock Gil up. If your reputation can share your experiences and the commitment to it takes to make positive changes every day is truly commendable. In addition to their inspiring work, I also want to recognize Wilo and Gary the Kid for their continuous contributions to the community by giving grants to black owned businesses. You two have helped provide four million dollars in grants for black-owned businesses and social service agencies. Y'all are amazing. They are four million dollars. Your generosity and commitment to uplifting those around you do not go unnoticed. You two are empowering others that look like you to succeed. It is with great pride that I present Thank you. Let's go. You better stand up, girl. You better get up. You're 5-0 now. I, I didn't go to the police academy, bro. You got no cuffs. I, I didn't go to the police academy. I don't know if I can receive this. I can't even fuck. So, so, Paolo Melkin called me down here to make me an office. <laughs> Tell him all this. <laughs> Look, got on, I'm proud of lock you up. I'm gonna lock you the up. I'm gonna lock you up. I'm gonna lock you up as soon as we leave. I'm with you. And you know there's a guy. Big Joe. I'm gonna put a hole in your face. Y'all know that background from the street. And to see you level up and to reach this, this is God's work. This ain't man's work. I ain't got none. I ain't got none. How the cuff girl up here? You lucky. I didn't, I didn't know I was becoming a part of the law enforcement. <laughs> I was actually <laughs> blowing it down on the way here. You are, you are, you are. I get here now. I'm a sheriff. Now, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, you give me the rules. Get up here. Is anybody oh, going to be able to get up here? Wait, if there's no smoking, you can take this shit. You gotta come to my office so I can swear you in. Oh, I'm coming. You gotta fill out. He's not gonna come. Second. <laughs> Second. You can't take them badges to go pull anybody over. Now, That's the first thing he was talking about. He whispered, telling him to pull somebody over, cuz. You know he got a cop car, too, right? You can't go pulling people over. You can't go running up to him and tell him, I got a badge now, do what I say. Oh no, that ain't me. Nah, that dude sound like him. All right. So y'all know what the rules are. Yes. And if you don't fill out that paperwork, Samira, uh -oh. that y'all have to fill out, that badge is null and void, and I'm gonna send my deputy to you. All right. We good? We good. So y'all have that deputy badge. I'll swing you in my office. Congratulations. I appreciate all that y'all do. You know, and I think you know that they shout out on the holiday too, the while we were building together for bar school. We want to send a shout out to bar school too, right? Because they enabled them to come out and help us. I think you gave away over four million. Yeah. And listen, we don't we they should have way more love in the city of Philadelphia. They give away four million dollars. They should not get no love other than from the city of Philadelphia or better than the city of Philadelphia. We gotta back our brothers up. And I know ODAC got some of that. I know some nonprofits in the room received some of that. And we wanna thank you for that, bro. It's down to the point he even passed Philly. Like, you know, I travel for work and these are two names that always come up. Yes. Which yes. speaks to, you know, how this is the post of Philly. You know, people automatically they think of Wild on Gilly. Mm -hmm. And this is something that they created and not, it hasn't been that long. I mean, I kind of feel the same thing. You know what I mean? That's why. When we uh, four million dollars worth the game, it was on some positive, you know, it was on some uplifting, it was on some, some bringing attention to people that's doing positive things and not focusing on the negative, you know what I mean? When you look at all the podcasts out there, you realize we got the hardest job. 
because we the only ones that ain't chasing the, the, the dumb shit. You know what I mean? So everybody else is chasing the dumb stuff. We just we just want to kick it with you, laugh, joke, let people know where you came from, how you grew up, how you got the way you're going, and how you're getting the way you're heading. So that's the difference between us and everybody else. How did y'all make it? A lot of people know your glory, but they don't know your story. And they see you, and they see the success. But they excuse you for saying this. A lot of people don't understand. Sometimes you gotta walk through hell and earth in order to get to heaven. So we tell me about that process, y'all. Coming from North Philadelphia, because we got a lot of people all over. They wanted, they got a disease out here called the brain cancer. It's your fault. I didn't get it. So what determination? What happened to you, bro? You know, God gonna test you, then He gonna bless you. So you gotta go through stuff to get through stuff, you know what I mean, to, to grow through stuff, to become something. Um, me, my, my story was just growing up in North Philly trying to be down with everything. As a young black man in the ghetto, you, you trying to be down, uh, ain't nobody gonna talk to you if you ain't getting no money. Come on, bro. So it was like, ain't nobody gonna mess with you. So it was like, I had to go out there and the only people that I seen getting respect in my community was people that was getting money. It wasn't the dude that went to work every day, it wasn't the, um, the respectable business. It wasn't them. It was the dudes that was doing illegal things. So I followed what I seen every day coming out of the crib and I wanted to be that. Wow. You know, because it wasn't just like the most beautiful girl in the neighborhood uh, was dealing with respect to the, the, uh, the drug dealer. Miss Brown, Miss Green, they spoke wow. to him too when he pulled up in his car. Hey, baby. Yeah. They ain't speak to rob wow. the, they ain't speak to rob the janitor that was coming from work every wow. day or the plumber. They never spoke to them dudes yeah. when they coming home all dirty. He shows more love to the street than the work. So, you know, and people, yeah. and in the ghetto, they love the successful criminal, so I wanted to be one. Wow. But I lost eight times. You said in the ghetto, they love the successful Oh, they love the successful. They only, they only mad, they only talk about you when you get locked up. Wow. They only say you, you fell once you get locked up. When you come around with that bankroll in your pocket, paying people bills and buying people this and taking care of people, they love you. That's great. But if you fall, they got something to say about you. That's so, you know, I wanted to be that, but just so happened, I always wound up in jail, so I wasn't good at that. So I had to be good at something else. And your last bit, you did how long you did your last bit? 20 years. 20 years straight. Okay, we'll get back to that. I think as me growing up as a kid in North Philadelphia, the biggest issue is staying focused. You know what I mean? And being a leader and not a follower, you know what I'm saying? And understanding who you are. You know, a lot of the, a lot, most of the kids out here that's doing all the crime is, is followers. They don't even want to do that shit. But they feel as though they got to live up to a certain, or they don't want to be called, he's a bitch, he's this, he's that. So they really don't want to do it. But they feel the peer pressure. You feel what I'm saying? So, so they feel as though they got to do it. They got to make it happen. They got to slide. They, so the biggest problem when you're growing up in Philadelphia is identifying who you are and not worrying about what other people think about you. That's it. That's you know, it. You know the city of Philadelphia is the only place in the world that we be at if people want pictures and before they ask for a picture they say, not on no can I get a picture? Wow. No, that's, that's, y'all heard that word. I can't say the way you have said it, but remember that word. That's the only place in the world. We could be in Atlanta, we could be in St. Louis, we could be in the Bahamas, we could be in Paris, we could be anywhere in the world. And people walk right up, yo, can I get a picture? Yo, Gilly Wallow, can I get a picture? Only in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, do people say, not only this, but can I get a picture? It's like, bro, what you talking about? That's only in your mind. I get asked for pictures all day. Why would it ever be on that? That's only in your mind, but that's some, that, that's, that, that's that Philly shit. See, let me tell you something about Philly. We too cool. We too tough. We too thorough. We too this. We too that. That's why this too broke. That's right. Tell him, man. Tell him. Oh, y'all wanted me to talk that shit, huh? It's too broke. They got too many twos going on. Let's go. You in Philly, I don't know. you ask why, you ain't got an answer. Come on, this ain't for nothing. So you don't like that nigga, you don't need no why? Think about that. A lot of times it's because he hit your you know it. He don't want to say that though. Your woman liked the picture on that nigga, on that nigga Instagram, now you don't like that now. I don't like that nigga. I don't like that nigga. No, because your woman liked the picture. So at the end of the day, Philly, we gotta stop that cool shit. That cool shit ain't gonna get you nowhere. 
I remember when he came home, he laid on the ground with ketchup on his head, right? And said, don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till you're laying on that ground and that ambulance coming, that shit locks away, and you're taking your last breath. And my family was like, that wild little crazy, man. He lost his mind in jail. He paying them same bills right now. That's right. Tell the truth. That's the fact. Them same He paying some of their bills right now. He was saying he spent 7,300 days in jail. He's the cultural advisor at YouTube. He's the CEO for Reform. He got one of the biggest clothing lines in the world. He got the biggest minority black podcast in the world. He drive a Lamborghini, a Porsche, a Maybach, a 63 Benz, a 63 truck, a Denali truck, a old school Lexus, and two raggedy ass minivans. I don't know why he got them. So to every kid in this audience right now, looking at us, we just two raggedy from North Philly, man. Don't ever think it's more than that. We two from North Philly who stayed focused, who knew what we wanted, who got drive, who got determination, who not going to be no follower, we going to be leaders. That's right, tell me. So if that's what you want to do, you can make anything happen. Ask him. He was in jail for 7,300 days. Y'all know how long that is? 20 years. You can do anything you want to do out here. Believe that. Hey, yo, yo, give round applause again. Give this thing to your heart. Hey, yo. And I was wondering, like, what point was it that you were in the cell that you were like, I'm coming out and I'm being different? Was there, like, a breaking point for you or something that you saw or something that you thought about yourself that you were like, enough is enough, I'm coming out and I'm going to be, I'm going to really do my thing? I believe, uh, you know. I had to be myself because me trying to be like everybody else got me in the cell. Um, ain't nobody in the ghetto doing, you know, we come from a place where everybody do what everybody do, but I realized I wasn't everybody. Ain't nobody doing nothing different out here. It's just that people are afraid to be themselves. In this audience, in our black community, we got so many talented people, but they're afraid to do what they really believe that they feel that, 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 that'll make them happy because they worrying about somebody judging them. And most of the time in our community, the people that's judging you got something to say, whatever, they ain't got shit going on themselves. Facts. They ain't got shit going on. They just gossiping, commenting. They fucked up. They, they don't even know how they're going to pay their bills, but you worrying about their opinion or what they saying about you. Uh, you just got to really love yourself. I started loving myself and I realized, like, what they think. I'm going to go back to Philly. I'm going to let everybody in Philly be cool and I'm going to just destroy it. While everybody being cool, they being tough, they, they, they too thorough for everything. I'm going to show them that they wasting their time and their life because they're going to watch my movie. See, I was, I said, listen, I said, this is what I'm going to do. Why, why everybody, everybody worrying about being thorough, like you got dudes, Philly dudes, they'll be thorough for nothing. Oh, I don't want to work, I'm too thorough. But you're not too thorough to be broke. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going I'm I'm to give everybody their popcorn. You know how they get about flowers? I'm going to give everybody their popcorn in Philly, and I'm going to be the director I'm gonna be the actor, I'm gonna be the cameraman of my movie. They gotta watch my movie. I ain't gotta watch nobody else's movie. They watching my shit. You see what I'm saying? Because they gonna complain, they gonna bitch, they gonna be entitled, and they gonna be lazy. Entitled. Our people, our people right now, our people, lazy to the mother. Don't nobody wanna work. Don't nobody wanna work. Don't nobody wanna work. And guess what? The only people out here, when you see these concerts, festivals, the people that, you know, you know the people that's not complaining? The everyday working people ain't complaining. It's the, it's the cool people. The cool people that's trying to finesse life. They want to finesse life. They don't believe in working. They don't believe in getting, a, getting a insurance. They don't believe in tech. Everybody is trying to finesse life. And they want somebody to finance a lifestyle that they're not willing to work for. Wow. You, you shouldn't be in no motherfucking club or no hookah lounge. You, you, should, you shouldn't be in no club or no hookah lounge and you got to borrow some money from somebody. Uh -oh. Like, like you, should, you, should, you should be on Instagram worrying about somebody's business when you don't know how your bill's going to be paid at the first of the month. You're not qualified to be on the gram. You need to be somewhere figuring out your life. No. 
And that's what people, people don't want to put that work in. So you ain't got to worry about, like, 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 as we, like, as we come here to sit here and talk, like I was going to tell Mel, don't tell people to be quiet. Winning ain't for everybody, so they don't need to hear this shit. Oh, that ain't making her. Like, he talking about some. He talking about some. I, I, I was going to check him. He talking about some. To chip, no, no. Let the people talk that want to talk and have a conversation. They're not going to be winners in the game of life. They don't want to be winners. They just come in here. They just come in here to see some shit, get some food or whatever, decorate the scenery. But everybody is not meant to be a winner. And we, and see, Instagram lied and told everybody, they, no, no. Some people is meant to be assistants to winners. Some people, some people is meant to be the cameraman of a winner, to be the accountant of a winner. But they're not meant to be winner. Everybody can't be LeBron. Everybody can't be Mike. Everybody can't be Prince. They can't be Marvin Gaye. And they can't be Gillian Wallow. You see what I'm saying? Hey, when, when, when is uh, Kevin showing it? This, this, this to our production people right here that work for us, right? When we win, they win. When we win, they win. Because we a team. Ain't no high in team. Team is together, each achieve more. Without them, we can't make it happen. Without us, they can't make it happen. So, everything we do is together. When you win, you win together. And I tell them a lot all the time when they came home from jail, I said, the bottom line is because everybody ain't with us. That's what makes the world go round. You got some that's losers. I've seen your face do like this. You got some that's losers. That's right. It don't matter how many times you talk to them, give them the right direction, God, them, them don't want to win. That's the truth. Oh, shit. That's the worst thing in the world, man. Because for somebody to feel like they're entitled to something that's yours, that you put the work in for, that you put the time, you put the effort, you put all the, everything you had to do to get what you got in another to feel like they're entitled to that, that's unbelievable to me. But you know me, I cut. Off. I got no problem. I'm old school, nigga. You call me, ask me for some money, and ain't for the right thing. I cut you off. I act like the phone hung up, and then I block you. I ain't get to you in eight months. Ah, players, shit happens, you know. You gotta see me in traffic. I ain't got time for it because the reality is, when me and my wife went to jail, nobody was there. Tell them. When my life was on the line, nobody was there. When I had to get bailed out and come home and live in a low ass apartment up the northeast, nobody was there. I had to build this shit from the ground up. I never complained. They never seen me frown. Every time you see me, I was guilty. You ain't even know I was going in a low ass apartment was this big. You take eight steps, you do the whole <laughs> But I never let them see me sweat. I bounce back on their ass like Spalding in the playoffs, you hear me? A nigga from Erie Avenue. Been shot out here, been locked up, but guess what? My sports drink is the official sports drink for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, my sports drink is the official sports drink for the Chicago Sky. When I tell you, hey, yeah, you I mean, you old school, only old say that still. Oh, young boy, be talking, yeah, I mean. To so all the youngins out there, y'all live in a world that's so easy to be productive. All you got to do is get something and stick to it. And once you put enough work in, I promise you God going to bless you, man. All right, so my question is, what was your biggest transition from shoes to business? And how are you both able to take it? Oh, well, you know, uh, me and Gil got two different departments of concentration. Um, I did a lot of studying when I was in the joint, and I deal with it. I, I deal with a lot of lawyers and accountants, right? And um, that's who I have natural conversation with. So the streets and business is like the same. The only thing different is in the business world, they'll rob you for millions of dollars with no gun. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, in, and in business, only person you got to worry about is Uncle Sam. In the streets, you got to worry about Boo Boo that's going to come rob you. Um, you gotta worry about the parole man, the police, you gotta worry about a lot of other things. But it's the same operations. 
It's like the same out, you got distribution, you got marketing in the streets, if you're selling dope or whatever you sell. It's sort of like the same, so it's like, you just gotta make the decision to say, hold up. Let me go over here and learn this. Let me learn about LLCs. Let me learn about taxes. Let me learn about trademarks. Let me learn about intellectual properties. And uh, it ain't hard, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta be willing, you, you gotta be able to decide. Cause I know some dudes that they ain't never leaving the streets. They doing well for themselves. They like, man, this is what it is. You know what I mean? Not saying they can't, but it's about what you comfortable doing. Could you handle that 10, 15, 20 year bit of somebody coming to kill you? Or do you want to remove yourself from that? So it's all about different, different strokes for different folks, you know? Let me tell you something, nephew. I'm talking to you. You gotta understand this, nephew. You can do anything, be anything you want to be. How old is you? You got life in your hands right now. You own them all. But what you gotta understand right now is the only thing that's gonna get in your way is that pressure. The pressure of being like everybody else. You gotta be willing and you gotta be bold enough to stand outside of everything that's going on in your neighborhood, in your school, on social media. If you can do that, if you can just get from 16 to 20 and you can hold on to your individualism, you can start learning about your credit right now. In the mo Learn about that credit. You can go online, you can find out about the credit, Neff. Get your credit together. If you decide to go to college when they see you them, them caught, don't take them. Don't mess up your credit, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you that. But if you can just stay dedicated enough to stay away from the dumb shit that goes on in the hood and don't be, don't be one of them real and be a smart, and be a smart, cause you know, um, ain't nothing wrong with being smart. That's the coolest shit you could be. Because everybody that's smart, the smart people run our lives. Amazon, our Apple, Galaxy, them all smart people. They dictate our life. Tesla, Mercedes, the, you Bank of America. Smart people created that. Ain't no real you create nothing in life. Well, look, let me see this. You, you know what I'm saying? Right? And this is my godson here. Listen, he's like, I'm gonna give this to him as a gift. Cause everything about selling all the time, he thinks this is an investment. Cause he know how many more people gonna purchase. No, but stuff. how much are these though? How much, how much are these? So there's seventy and it's ninety dollars right here. Listen, you want to give it to them, but that's what they're gonna do. Now they're about to give something to you. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, bro. He got two hundred dollars off the seven. Yeah, do a little work. I don't know, you just had a thousand dollars to follow up before I'm not going to do that. That's what I'm talking about. Yo,